Hi Church, I think today is a very important day that we need to look to God. As the whole church has been fasting and praying, I think it's very important to ponder on the Word of God. As I said, every night I will try to send messages pertaining to the Word of Life, the Word of Healing, the Word of Restoration. Today I believe God is also going to speak to you. And I'm going to touch from the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 17. As is written, the just shall live by faith. Christianity is a life of faith, just as the natural man can't survive without breathing. There can be no Christian life without faith. Faith is the lifestyle of the believer. Everything we do as Christian must be by faith to be acceptable by God. Romans chapter 14 verse 23 says, Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let me read again. It says, Romans chapter 14 verse 23 says, Whatsoever is not of faith is of sin. And then also another translation it says, all conduct not based on faith is sinful. I think today as we go through the whole situation in our country and around us, I think there is a place for us to focus on faith and to know what our God will do. I'm going to touch on five aspects or six aspects of what God is able to do in our life. Let's see what our God will do. As a time of fasting and praying as a church, I think that we need to know what our God can do because we have a God who is a creator of the whole universe. But at the same time, we are living on this earth and there is always an element of fear. There is always an element of fear, an element of doubt, an element of scariness that goes on in a core of our life. But we need to know our God. In the time like this, let's look to God and say, Lord, what our God can do and what the Word of God can do to our life. Now, our God is a God of all grace. Number one, number one, our God is a God of all grace. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says, Now the God of all grace, who called you to His eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will personally restore, establish, strengthen, support you after you have suffered a little. I think we need to understand what the grace of God will do. As the whole world goes through fear, and uh, uh, as goes through a kind of depressing situation. But Christians, church, I want you to trust the Lord. Our God is a God of all grace. Now, number two, He's a God of all peace. He's a God of all peace. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. And He says, He's a God of all peace. Now, He says in verse 20, He says, now may the God of peace, he says now, the first sentence he says, may the God of all peace, who brought you up from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of an everlasting covenant. I want you to see, God is going to give you peace of what Jesus has done. Uh, Jesus died for us and he rose from the dead. And he is our great shepherd and we are his sheep. And the Bible says we have got a blood covenant. An everlasting covenant that we are washed by the blood of Jesus. That we are established by God. And God, we need to plead the blood of Jesus all the time in our life. And I want you to see what the Lord is able to do in the second point. The God of all peace. In the time like this, 
we need to rely on the peace of God. It's only the word of God. It's only the word of God. And we need to be wise and we need to be disciplined in order to see the God of all peace working in our life. Number three, he's a God of comfort. Number three, he's a God of comfort. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three says, Praise the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort. I want you to see, praise the God of our Father. I want you to see what the Lord has done. He says, He is the Father of mercy and a God of all comfort. I want you to see in the time like this, there is only one thing that we need to rely on. We need to rely on God the Father, what Jesus has done for us, and the Father of mercy and God of all comfort will comfort you. I know there are many stressful things that we go through this junction of time, but there is a place where God says, God of all comfort will come into your home, into your life, into every situation, and God is going to reign upon your life. Now, number four, he says, he's a God of hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, he's a God of all hope. When every hope in the world began to shake, but we need to have hope in God. And he says in uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. You see, the hope in God must fill us with joy and peace. I know there are sorrows, there are sadness, and there are grieving time, but I want you to see what God will do. Now, he says in verse 13, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in Him. Now, we need to believe in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to see this verse. It's a very wonderful verse. He says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in Him. Let's believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of God, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In this time, there is only one resurrection that needs to come from our life. It's a resurrection of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit to bring about the overflowing of hope into our life. That is where we will find joy and peace. Now, number five, he's a God of glory. You know, Acts chapter 7, verse 2 says, He's a God of all glory. Brothers and fathers, he said, Listen, the God of all glory appeared to our forefather Abraham when he was still in the old place with his parents before he settled in Aaron. I want you to see what God is able to do. I believe these are the time in the book of Acts God was talking about we need to have the glory of God appearing in our life. I believe the glory of God is the manifestation of God, is the presence of God, is a peace of God that God will just come and reign. Number five, the God of all glory can appear in your life. Even at this junction of time, when you begin to pray, when you begin to look to God, as you begin to call and say, Lord, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm seeking the face of God. Cover my family, my loved one, those who are sick, those who are in trouble, and those who are going through a, 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 a tormenting time in their life. Uh, let, the, let the God of glory appear. Let the glory of God appear to give us a confirmation, to give us a courage to answer our prayer. The God of glory, the Shekinah glory, the presence of God, the power of God to appear upon your life, upon your situation. My friends, it could be any kind of situation and circumstances that we go through. But I want you to understand what we are going through is a temporal time. 
It's a temporary situation. But that's why as we begin to fast and pray and lock down, and we, we, we need to understand why all these. Uh, this is a time that God is just aligning us to see the manifestation of His glory. Number six, this God is our God forever. I thank God for this. This God is a God, our God forever. Is our God forever. In the book of Psalms 48, verse 14, he says in verse 14, This God, our God forever and ever, He will always lead us. I want you to know, when you rely on God, the Holy Spirit, He is a God who is going to abide with you. Those who are sick in your body, I want you to lay your hand and I want you to start praying because God is going to touch you and God is going to heal you and God is going to change everything in your life because this God is our God forever and ever. I want you to know the God that you believe is going to be a God who is going to deliver you. He is going to lead you into the path of victory. I have these six points and I want you to know tonight, you know, I want everyone to prepare communion together with your family. You know, every family, every individual, you know, if you are, if you've got a family, it's fine. If you are an individual, it's fine. If you are a single, it's fine. If you're a child, that is fine. But I want you to find a little bread and a little uh, a cup of Ribena. And let's have communion together. But I believe communion is a time that we surrender and we say to the Lord, Oh God, come and cleanse me. Come Lord and put the blood on my doorposts of my life. Put the blood, I sprinkle the blood, Lord, on the doorposts of my life. I purge the blood, oh God. Cleanse me, oh God, Lord. No, every night, let's have communion. In this couple of weeks, you know, in this couple of days, in this couple of uh, time that is, uh, we fast and pray. Let's have communion together with the family. I want you to take bread. I want you to take ribena. And as we begin to do it as a family, ask the blood of Jesus. Ask the blood of Jesus to cover you, to cleanse you, to forgive you, to heal you, to strengthen you, to restore you and to bless you. I want you to ask the Lord to do this. And I want you to pray for all those who are listening. I want to pray for all those who are listening to this message. I want to pray for all those who are sick, all those in the front line you know, of the medical field, the police field, the army, and all those who are working in the government field, and all those who are us to work at this time where this whole uh, period where the corona viral is attacking people but i want you to know that god can reign over you and god will protect you i want you to have communion as you have communion i want you to pray in your with your family with your loved ones let the lord cover them and even tonight i i pray that god will touch you and heal you father i pray in the name of jesus lord all those who are listening all those who are having communion, all those, Lord, who call upon the name of Jesus right now, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you come and reign upon this life. Lord, let the God of all grace come, the God of all peace, the God of all comfort, the God of all hope, the God of all glory, the God is our God forever. This God is a God forever in our life. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you will begin to minister, you begin to touch, and you begin to heal your people. And Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for a miracle. I pray, O oh God, you touch and meet all the needs for the family that don't have anything. Lord, this is a time to contribute, to share with the neighbors, with the people of need, that we will reach out and touch them. Father, we also pray, Lord, we want to pray for the neighbors, those who are affected, Lord, those who are suffering. Father, we pray for healing and we pray, O oh God, your comfort and your strengthening, your miracle to come. Father, so we pray, Lord, for everyone who's listening. Bless them. Lord, keep them well. Keep them by your grace. Heal them. And Lord, let the immune system, Lord, be strengthened. Let the immune system 
be made whole. Let the immune system be healed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you and we commit, Lord, everyone to your hands. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we ask and we pray. Amen.